Are you looking to learn about Bootstrap 5's grids? I'm not surprised. They're fantastic for responsive web design. You've come to the right place. Today I'm going to talk all about Bootstrap grids and how to set them up in our web page and how to use them to create a nice responsive design. Hello my friends and welcome back to my channel. And if you're new here, a very warm welcome to you all. I'm Jay from Coding with Jaybird. And here on my channel, we learn all about web development and current tech. If you'd like to see more of my videos, be sure to subscribe. Now let's get your favorite code editor ready and let's start coding. Bootstrap's grid system uses a series of containers, rows, and columns to lay out and align content. It's built with Flexbox and it's fully responsive. Many of you have likely searched on Google for a solution to quickly create a responsive web design. Bootstrap 5's grid system is fantastic and easy to implement in any web design project. We always need to start with having a CDN at the top and a CDN at the bottom of our web page. You can get these from getbootstrap.com. For a grid layout to work, we need to wrap it within a div that has a class of container. And then we need to have another div which has a class of row. And inside this row, we need to have our columns. And these columns can have a class of call. Now I'm going to want some content in the column. So let's create another div and we'll give this a class of Lego. And I've actually come up with some styling for the Lego class. So we're going to see this block show up in the browser. So what's happening right now? I have one column in a row and it's taking up the whole 12 columns of the grid. And when I stretch it from extra small to small, we can see that it adjusts a little bit to match that breakpoint. We stretch it a bit more. It adjusts and scales up to match the breakpoint or the max width for a medium screen size. And similarly, when we go to a large or an extra large or an extra extra large. Okay, now what if I had two columns? Now they both take up an equal amount of space. So they take up six columns out of the 12 column grid structure. And now there's some natural space or gap between the columns that we can always expect. And when I stretch the screen, we'll see Again, it adjusted from extra small to small and then again to medium, but it always kept the two columns and they're always taking up six out of the 12 columns in the grid. And we can have as many of these as we like. So let's duplicate this a few times. Now you can see we have six different columns because I have six of these call classes here. Now, what if I wanted one particular column to be wider than the others? Well, I could force this first one to be four columns wide. And now we can see this is taking up four columns out of the 12 column grids. So these remaining five columns shrink or stretch to take up the remaining space in the 12 column grid. Okay, now let's clean up some of this. And we'll go back to our three columns. What if I wanted my first column to be six wide and I wanted my second column to be six wide as well. Well, they would take up half of the 12 column grid. So six columns each and six columns each. Well, this third column got pushed down to the next row, but it didn't just take up a small portion of that row. It took up the entire width of that row. And that's because a call left alone will take up as much space as is available in the grid structure. So it has an entire row to fill up. So now when I stretch the screen size, we'll see it stays the same. They're each taking up six columns and six columns in the first row and the entire row for the last column. Now, what if I wanted this next column to have a width of, let's say only four, we can set that as well. And now if I had another column after this that had, let's say another five, we can see this first column is taking up four columns and the next one is taking up five columns. That leaves another three columns of empty space. So we could add more columns after if we liked. And they would just take up the remaining space. And if I added many of these, you can see they're filling in the space that's left. And now if I stretch the screen, it's going to look exactly the same across all my different breakpoints and screen sizes. But what if I wanted a different layout or different column structure based on the screen size or the device that my viewer is using? Well, we can use breakpoints within our grid system to modify that. We can add breakpoints to these call classes to adjust or modify the way the page looks 
based on the screen size. Okay, let's reset back to three columns. And now let's say our first column takes up a width of four and the second column takes up a width of six. Okay, so we have four, six, and two. Now let's say when we move up to a medium sized screen, we want the first and the second column to both take up six columns. So what we can do is we can add another call class, call-md-6. And now nothing is going to change in an extra small screen size. So as I stretch this, nothing changes in a small, but when I move on to a medium screen, we'll see the first and the second div take up six columns each. Now let's say I want this third column to look different on a large screen. Well, I can add call-lg-5. Let's say five. And now when we stretch to a large screen, we'll see this column takes up only five columns out of the available 12 columns. So it's very easy to change the layout of our grids based on different breakpoints. Let's say I wanted to change on an extra large screen to take up four columns. So I can say call-xl-4. And similarly, call-xl-4. And perhaps I want to do the same thing with this one, call-xl-4. And now all of these will fit on the same line when we get to an extra large screen size. Okay, so starting from extra small, let's move all the way to an extra large screen. And we can see all three of these divs are now within the same row and they're taking up four columns each within the 12 column grids that are available. Now, sometimes you might also have a use case where you wanna push a column over, where you wanna create more space. Uh, let's say there's something you wanna put between the columns. Well, you can easily do that with what's called an offset class. So let's set these back to something smaller to demonstrate that. So let's start with maybe four, four and four as well. Okay, so we're back to our three columns in this grid. Now, if I wanted to offset, let's say the second div, I could add a class of offset dash two. And what's happening is the second div is moving over two columns. Now, this last div ran out of space because there's no space for it to fit in there. Now, if I change this one to two, we'll see that it comes back up. So we have four columns, an empty space of two columns, then again, four columns, and then the remaining two columns. I could also change the offset to only one, and now it moves back a little bit. I can even give this one an offset, let's say offset one, and now the first one's moved over as well. Now what if I wanted a larger offset? I can do that as well. So I can move the first one over something large like eight, and let's say we don't do anything to the second one. Well, what happens is because the first one is taking up four columns already, the other eight empty columns fill up the entire 12 columns in this grid. So naturally, the remaining divs have to be pushed to the second row. Now, offsets aren't used very often, but it's always good to know how to use an offset. Now, this is going to look the same across all screen sizes because we haven't put any set breakpoints in our actual classes here. So as I stretch this or shrink the browser, it'll look the same. Bootstrap 5's grid system is a great way to customize a web page very quickly, and you can have it look different based on the different screen sizes as you saw in today's demonstration. We'll be getting into different components and different things that we can add to our grid system over the next few weeks. Now, if you're waiting for the next video to be released, in the meantime, you can check out my JavaScript tutorial for beginners, and I'll leave the link on the top right side of the screen here. Now it's a very great and easy beginner series, so anyone can really pick it up. And if you're just looking to brush up your HTML, CSS skills, I'll also add the link for that on the top right. And you can have a look at my HTML and CSS tutorial for beginner series. As you can see, CSS grids are fantastic for responsive web design. I hope you've enjoyed this video today. And if you have, please don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel. Thank you so much for your continued support. It means a lot to me really appreciate all my viewers out there and I'd love to hear from you all. So please feel free to leave a comment down below. Until next week, keep on coding.